Hi there. I'm recording this introduction to this podcast from Jakarta in Indonesia, and I'm just very happy to be able to welcome you to this podcast. This is for day number 78 in the Digging Deeper Daily reading calendar. Today, we will listen to Numbers 16, Psalm 36, and the first reading in Luke 23. May the Lord bless you today. In Numbers 15, we found out that there were sacrifices that could be made for unintentional sins, whether done by the whole community or by an individual. But there was no sacrifice to cover an intentional sin, such as working on the Sabbath, as illustrated in chapter 15 also. The tassels that Tevia in Fiddler on the Roof doesn't know the meaning of are explained at the end of chapter 15. Numbers 16 One day Korah, son of Izhar, a descendant of Kohath, son of Levi, conspired with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, from the tribe of Reuben. They incited a rebellion against Moses along with 250 leaders of the community, all prominent members of the assembly. They united against Moses and Aaron and said, You have gone too far. The whole community of Israel has been set apart by the Lord, and he is with all of us. What right do you have to act as though you are greater than the rest of the Lord's people? When Moses heard what they were saying, he fell face down on the ground. Then he said to Korah and his followers, Tomorrow morning the Lord will show us who belongs to him and who is holy. The Lord will allow only whom he selects to enter his own presence. Korah and all your followers must prepare your incense burners. Light fires in them tomorrow and burn incense before the Lord. Then we will see whom the Lord chooses as his holy one. You Levites are the ones who have gone too far. Then Moses spoke to Korah. Now listen, you Levites. Does it seem insignificant to you that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the community of Israel to be near him so you can serve in the Lord's tabernacle? and stand before the people to minister to them. Korah, God has already given this special ministry to you and your fellow Levites. Are you now demanding the priesthood as well? The Lord is the one you and your followers are really revolting against. For who is Aaron that you are complaining about him? Then Moses summoned Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, but they replied, We refuse to come before you. Isn't it enough that you brought us out of Egypt, a land flowing with milk and honey, to kill us here in the wilderness, and that you now treat us like your subjects? What's more, you haven't brought us into another land flowing with milk and honey. You haven't given us a new homeland with fields and vineyards. Are you trying to fool these men? We will not come. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, Do not accept their grain offerings. I have not taken so much as a donkey from them, and I have never hurt a single one of them. And Moses said to Korah, You and all your followers must come here tomorrow and present yourselves before the Lord. Aaron will also be here. You and each of your 250 followers must prepare an incense burner and put incense on it, so you can all present them before the Lord. Aaron will also bring his incense burner. So each of the men prepared an incense burner, lit the fire, and placed incense on it. Then they all stood in the entrance of the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. Meanwhile, Korah had stirred up the entire community against Moses and Aaron, and they all gathered at the tabernacle entrance. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to the whole community, and the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Get away from all these people so that I may instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. O God, they pleaded, you are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Must you be angry with all your people when only one man sins? And the Lord said to Moses, 
Then tell all the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So Moses got up and rushed over to the tents of Dathan and Abiram, followed by the elders of Israel. Quick, he told the people, get away from the tents of these wicked men and don't touch anything that belongs to them. If you do, you will be destroyed for their sins. So all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Then Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the entrances of their tents together with their wives and children and little ones. And Moses said, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things that I have done, for I have not done them on my own. If these men die a natural death, or if nothing unusual happens, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord does something entirely new, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them and all their belongings, and they go down alive into the grave, then you will know that these men have shown contempt for the Lord. He had hardly finished speaking the words when the ground suddenly split open beneath them. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the men, along with their households and all their followers who were standing with them, and everything they owned. So they went down alive into the grave, along with all their belongings. The earth closed over them, and they all vanished from among the people of Israel. All the people around them fled when they heard their screams. The earth will swallow us too, they cried. Then fire blazed from the Lord and burned up the 250 men who were offering incense. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, to pull all the incense burners from the fire, for they are holy. Also tell him to scatter the burning coals. Take the incense burners of these men who have sinned at the cost of their lives, and hammer the metal into a thin sheet to overlay the altar. Since these burners were used in the Lord's presence, they have become holy. Let them serve as a warning to the people of Israel. So Eleazar, the priest, collected the 250 bronze incense burners that had been used by the men who died in the fire, and he hammered them into a thin sheet to overlay the altar. This would warn the Israelites that no unauthorized person, no one who was not a descendant of Aaron, should ever enter the Lord's presence to burn incense. If anyone did, the same thing would happen to them as happened to Korah and his followers. So the Lord's instructions to Moses were carried out. But the very next morning, the whole community of Israel began muttering again against Moses and Aaron, saying, You have killed the Lord's people. As the community gathered to protest against Moses and Aaron, they turned toward the tabernacle and saw that the cloud had covered it, and the glorious presence of the Lord appeared. Moses and Aaron came and stood in front of the tabernacle, and the Lord said to Moses, Get away from all these people so that I can instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. And Moses said to Aaron, Quick, take an incense burner and place burning coals on it from the altar, lay incense on it, and carry it out among the people to purify them and make them right with the Lord. The Lord's anger is blazing against them. The plague has already begun. Aaron did as Moses told him and ran out among the people. The plague had already begun to strike down the people. But Aaron burned the incense and purified the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stopped. But 14,700 people died in that plague in addition to those who had died in the affair involving Korah. Then, because the plague had stopped, Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tabernacle. Psalm 36 is a song praising God's unfailing love. Psalm 36 For the choir director, a psalm of David the servant of the Lord. Sin whispers to the wicked deep within their hearts. They have no fear of God at all. In their blind conceit, they cannot see how wicked they are. Everything they say is crooked and deceitful. They refuse to act wisely or do good. 
They lie awake at night, hatching sinful plots. Their actions are never good. They make no attempt to turn from evil. Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the ocean depths. You care for people and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your unfailing love, O God! All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. You feed them from the abundance of your own house, letting them drink from your rivers of delights. For you are the fountain of life, the light by which we see. Pour out your unfailing love on those who love you. Give justice to those with honest hearts. Don't let the proud trample me or the wicked push me around. Look, those who do evil have fallen. They are thrown down, never to rise again. Do we see any similarity between this and number 60? Chapter 22 of Luke ended with Peter's denial of being a follower of Jesus, and we heard of the council's decision against Jesus. Luke 23 Then the entire council took Jesus to Pilato, the Roman governor. They began to state their case. This man has been leading our people astray by telling them not to pay their taxes to the Roman government and by claiming that he is the Messiah, a king. So Pilato asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You are the one who says it. Pilato turned to the leading priests and to the crowd and said, I find nothing wrong with this man. Then they became insistent. But he is causing riots by his teaching wherever he goes, all over Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Oh, is he Galilean? Pilato asked. And when they said he was, Pilato sent him to Herode Antipas, because Galilee was under Herode's jurisdiction, and Herode happened to be in Jerusalem at the time. Herode was delighted at the opportunity to see Jesus because he had heard about him and had been hoping for a long time to see him perform a miracle. He asked Jesus question after question, but Jesus refused to answer. Meanwhile, the leading priests and teachers of religious law stood there shouting their accusations. Then Herode and his officers began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a royal robe on him and sent him back to Pilato. Herode and Pilato, who had been enemies before, became friends that day. Then Pilato called together the leading priests and the other leaders, along with the people, and he announced his verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence and find him innocent. Herode came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty, so I will have him flogged and then I will release him. Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd and with one voice they shouted, Kill him and release Barabbas to us. Barabbas was in prison for taking part in an insurrection in Jerusalem against the government and for murder. Pilato argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he demanded, Why? What crime has he committed? For I found no reason to sentence him to death, so I will have him flogged and then I will release him. But the mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilato sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded. 
As they had requested, he released Barabbas, the man in prison for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs that have not borne a child and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? And now let's pray. O Lord, how stubborn could the people of Israel be to see proof after proof that You had spoken through Moses, and Moses was right. But then Moses was accused of murdering the Lord's people. O Lord, as the psalm says, Sin whispers to the wicked deep within their hearts, they have no fear of God at all. In their blind conceit, they cannot see how wicked they are. O Lord, Forgive our wickedness, for Jesus' sake. Open our eyes, that we might see how wonderful your gift is to us. And this psalm also celebrates your unfailing love. That, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. O Lord, how precious this is to us. And what Jesus endured when the tree was green. And now we, your followers, are here when the tree is dry. O Lord, turn and have mercy on us, for we live during this time. And inspire us and allow us today to be your servants who will glorify the Lord Christ Jesus.